Inform that recently Russia and China have begun quarantining cars and other material coming out of Japan because they detected trace amounts of radioactivity on them. Can you just update the committee on the measures taken by the Australian government to ensure that imports from Japan, including principally food, are not contaminated with harmful radioactive material? Yes, Carl Magnus Larsen again, CEO of Arpensa. Um, thank you, Senator. Uh, I can update you on that, and uh, I can also point to the fact that uh, on Friday there will be a report on uh, the activities that we have undertaken in relation to goods and food arriving from Japan that will go up on our website. This Friday? This Friday. So uh, in terms of monitoring and what we have detected, uh, back in April 2011, we detected at uh, the uh, Darwin monitoring station, we detected airborne activity, uh, very, very low amounts, and that is uh, from the CTBT uh, monitoring station, which yeah. obviously are, are adapted to detect clandestine nuclear weapons tests and are extremely sensitive, so that's of negligible concern from the health perspective, and we haven't detected anything since. We have uh, analyzed over 500 food samples and uh, found very small levels of radioactivity in most of the food samples. In some of the dried food samples, we have found more, like dried in tea, food. dried food, yes. Oh, dry food, like in sorry. tea, like in dried mushrooms. Um, we have uh, uh, undertaken measurement of goods arriving from uh, Japan. We have measured uh, cars, both new cars and, and uh, used cars. We have also measured the, um, uh, the ships, actually uh, carrying the cars uh, to the Australian ports themselves. We have also monitored the ballast water that they mm. carry with them. And uh, generally speaking, in, in terms of, of uh, surface monitoring of the cars, we haven't detected anything. We have only detected background, small activities in the ballast water. Uh, there Sorry. has also been some concern, as you may have noticed, over um, certain um, fauna that is migratory. There has been uh, information in the press about tuna uh, off the coast, probably uh, being contaminated off the coast of Japan, and then subsequently they have been caught off the coast of the United States. We have done measurements on, on mutton birds, what happen to be uh, migratory birds that uh, pass the coast of Japan uh, up to the coast of uh, North America, and they return mm. via the Pacific back to Australia where they breed. Uh, we have made measurements on them. We have also made desktop studies and we don't find any contamination that is of any concern whatsoever. So, Dr. Larson, in terms of manufactured goods and food, yeah. have we had to turn away any shipments of material coming no. into the country no. since last March? No. no. Um, there's a, a vast amount of cargo, obviously, manufactured and, and food and all sorts of other stuff comes into Australia. What, what fraction of material is actually monitored on the way in? Uh, very little is monitored. The, uh, the food program is something that we have done uh, at, uh, at the request of Aquis. And maybe I should ask Dr. Solomon, who has actually been in charge of the monitoring program, to, to expand a little bit on that. Uh, Stephen Solomon, uh, Radiation Health Services, Apanza. Uh, over the past year, Apanza has undertaken um, measurements of food on request of uh, DAF, uh, which uh, uh, obviously uh, we have measured up to 500 samples. Uh, we have not detected any levels above the international guidance levels. Yeah. Uh, we, over the uh, recent times, uh, we have looked to change that monitoring program to a screening program targeting particular areas, food coming arising from particular areas and particular foodstuffs. Yeah. Uh, and, and it has to be said, the Japanese government have a very intensive program of food monitoring in yeah. place. Um, the, I guess the number of samples that they have measured runs into the hundreds of thousands right. now. So that our program at the moment, our recommendation, our advice to DAF has been, and, and to Fazance, is that we, un that we undertake screening of particular food from particular areas on a limited basis to give us confidence that the processes in place within Japan are robust and sound. Okay, good. Thank you. I might come back to this if there's, if there's time later. Um, 
It's not possible to estimate for us, I suppose, what fraction or what proportion of imported goods are actually subject to some kind of test. In Australia? Yeah, into Australia. Uh, well, certainly within Australia, there is a limit, limit, very limited amount of testing. I mean, that's a very small fraction, I'd, I'd be okay. saying. So effectively, we're relying on the systems that the Japanese government has put in place to prevent material from leaving the country in the first place? Uh, in terms of the measurement program, that is the case, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would just want to jump to, uh, if I could, Dr. Larson, what can you tell the committee about discussions between Arpanza and ANSTO about the ComCare report in, about which there was a recent KPMG assessment into the yttrium incident that essentially vindicated the ANSTO whistleblower, David Reid? I've had a rather disturbing exchange earlier this morning with Mr. Uh, Dr. Patterson mm -hmm. from ANSTO, where he effectively mm -hmm. uh, denied that there was necessarily any incident at all, which I find a bit alarming, actually. But I. He also noted quite correctly that this document was produced for and intended for Arpans and not for ANSTO, which I take on board. So I'm just seeking your views on that report. Well, <coughs> obviously, since uh, this occurred in parallel with uh, this session, well, not exactly in parallel since you're here, Senator, but uh, um, I will have to go and uh, have a look at the Hansard as it becomes available in order to see what uh, Dr. Patterson stated in relation to that. Yeah. In relation to the KPMG re uh, report, I have stated and I have informed ANSTO that I accept the conclusions of uh, the KPMG report that it's likely that a contamination occurred in that particular morning and uh, that it's possible that um, the informant, uh, his correction of, of events uh, is, uh, is correct. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that means also that we have amended the inspection report that was issued previously. We have provided an addendum to that. Uh, in relation to the letter that I sent to ANSTO uh, informing them about my conclusions, uh, I have realized uh, from the response that we got uh, that they were not prepared to fully agree with uh, the conclusions of the KPMG report and they would come back with more specified comments and I have as yet not received any. Yeah, okay. Uh, that is, um, I won't ask you to comment on Dr. Patterson's comments today, obviously, uh, but that is entirely consistent with the position that Amsto seems to be taking. Um, is it your view, though, that Amsto has actually made misleading statements about this incident? Not, not including statements that might have been made this morning, but Ansto effectively is still disputing that anything necessarily occurred. And I find that alarming. Well, I think that we, it's a... Uh, cannot make a statement calling another agency misleading this, if the agency oh, wishes to make a statement, that's yeah. fine, but they I'll cannot respond to the question you asked. I was just going to make a comment that obviously the KPMD report uh, acknowledgement, uh, acknowledges that there is an uncertainty here. Hmm. And to some extent, the fact that there is uncertainty is enough for me to raise concerns because the uncertainty indicates that there is uncertainty around who is present and who is not at a certain point in time. Now, that goes back to 2007. Yeah. So this is an old incident. This is five years, and we have seen uh, very much improvement um, in the handling of um, both such events and uh, in the handling of exit and, and uh, entry control. And there is actually a refurbishment going on, and I have requested to uh, have a full report on uh, the project refurbishment project when it's finalized. Okay, well, I'll ask you about that in subsequent sessions. I think one of the reasons that we're still fighting over this five years later is that ANSTO has, has offered up dispute and disagreement at every single turn, and that's why we're, that's why we're still here. Um, Dr. Larson, you've recently given public notice of a pending decision regarding a facility licence at ANSTO's uh, Lucas Heights Centre, which relates to temporary storage or interim storage, Correct. if you will, for fuel or spent fuel reprocessing waste coming back from Europe. Mm. Can you just talk us through the nature of that decision and when it's expected and what role your office will play from here? Well, we are currently doing a preliminary review of the material that has been sent to us um, for two purposes, or for a number of purposes. We need to respond, and we have, to SUPAC, to the Department of Environment, as this is an information that is necessary for their decisions in relation to the EPBC Act. Uh, we need to um, convince ourselves that the material is actually reviewable and we believe that the material is reviewable. And finally, we need to have material in the form that can be used in the public consultation process. Uh, with regard to the latter aspect, I think that there is still some work to do. 
to get, get the material uh, prepared and ready for in a form that is useful for the public consultation process. As soon as I have that material, I will uh, start the public consultation process, which I believe is going to uh, last for about six to eight weeks. Okay. Um, now, that is, that is distinct from, or will that be linked to any uh, public consultation process that, that Minister Burke decides to undertake as part of his formal That would be approvals. distinct from. Distinct from. Yeah. Uh, would you will you be collaborating with or keeping an eye on We would certainly be, something? but if there is a decision to go for public consultation uh, under the EPBC Act, my understanding is that that will be driven by, by ANSTO. Yes. And uh, obviously there is no connection between ourselves and ANSTO in okay. that regard. All right, thank but you. But we will certainly collaborate with the Department of Environment. Yep. Okay, but you've already, you, I'm not sure if I'm putting words in your mouth now or not, you've already decided that you will undertake a process of public consultation when this well, process gets is, up. Well, this is, uh, this is uh, a nuclear facility, so that's mandatory in the, in the legislation. Understood. Okay, yeah. thank you. Um, coming back to an old one, the current status of the National Radiation Dose Register, mm -hmm. how advanced is the work to incorporate historical data? We've had some back and forth here in the past about yeah. the Northern Territory cohort. What, what yeah, the Northern us? Territory is, uh, as you know, with the change to the um, Radiation Protection Act of the Northern Territory, is now coming on board. Uh, that was actually the Amendment Act was um, took effect from the 2nd of July, I believe, 2nd of June, might have been 2nd of June, and only a few days later we started to receive data. Okay. So far from the range of mine, we have not received more than about 500, or the dose records for about 500 workers because there are issues with the transfer of data. Okay. There are no other issues, it's a, it's a purely technical issue. All right. Out of and, and in total we have got now close to 25,000 or those data for close to 25,000 workers. Of the, to of the total number of workers in the NT who you'd expect to end up on the register, what, of what proportion of those is 500? Um, I would think that that would be maybe, again, Dr. Other, 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 uh, uh, otherwise I will have to take that on notice. Mm. But that is all yeah. notice. We yeah. take that on notice. Half? More than half? Less than half? Uh, I can't remember from the top okay. of my head the workforce no, right. at the Rain of Mine currently. All right. Um, at what point will de-identified data be made public from that data set? Well, the dose register is actually set up in order to facilitate for the workers to recover their own dose data. So yeah. when they are moving around, so that's really the purpose of it. There are of course many other purposes that you can use the dose register for. And this is something that we need to discuss with uh, the um, different companies that supply the dose data, what we can use and uh, how we can use it. And uh, we are in the process of doing that. But obviously it's a very useful source for information and for time tracking and for also monitoring the implementation of good practice mm. in uh, the different facilities. And in the end of the day, it's something that is of concern for us, of course, mm. as driving the national uniformity process in this area. All right, thank you. It's good to see that proceeding. Have I got time for one more? Well, that's the last one from me. Um, is, uh, so we've seen the Prime Minister in Delhi currently foreshadowing uh, an agreement with, uh, with the Indian government on uranium, trans uh, uranium sales for their civil nuclear power program. That process is expected to take months to years. I've seen estimates of anything up to two years to conclude that agreement. Will our PANSA have any role uh, in assessing, or it, let's just start, will you have any role uh, in drafting such an agreement? We would only have a role in providing advice to the relevant uh, governmental agencies and to government in uh, anything that relates to what is within our mandate. Okay. Uh, but otherwise we wouldn't have a direct role. I will ask Dr. Floyd when we get to him later today or tomorrow about the proliferation impacts of which I'm sure his expertise will be drawn sure. upon. What I'm asking you though is given significant um, uh, concerns locally and globally about safety standards at mm -hmm. Indian nuclear plants, will your advice be sought uh, in any way at all about the safety of the plants, the civil plants, not mm -hmm. the military ones, to which we will be selling this material? <clears throat> Currently I don't have any more information than what is in the, in, in, uh, the public domain and you will have seen probably the, um, uh, the audit office um, report in India. For example. And um, that information is there and it's for anyone to see. But I do not have any specific information or inside information, if you like, from the situation in India that I can draw upon here. All right. 
I'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the officer.